This guy's taking part at Battlefield Fight League 80. He holds a 2 and one record. He will be taking on Christian Tremaine in a... Seems like it's a bit of a grudge match. Please welcome Jaden Martin to the show. Jaden, thanks for joining me today, man. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for having me. No worries. Now, uh, we haven't spoken, I don't think, since... Uh, you competed at Rise FC. It's been quite like we've spoken, but we haven't done a, a true interview. So it's been quite some time. You had a bit of a hiatus uh, after that uh, Battlefield Fight League card, and then you came back at this last event and scored a vicious, vicious knockout. So just tell me, man, how good did it feel to finally get back in that goddamn cage? Uh, it's good. You know, it's been a minute. I've been training nonstop in preparation, but uh, it's always something holding me back, whether it's an injury or just you can't find a, an opponent. Fights didn't line up, uh, you know, helping Kyle because uh, he was at the time right on the cusp of getting in the UFC and now he's there. So uh, there's a lot going on, but, you know, the, the focus is there. The body is feeling great. Uh, I want to keep the momentum going. And uh, the goal, like I've mentioned in the past, is to get like at least three to four, maybe even five fights this year if um, I'm lucky and healthy. Is it sim strictly Battlefield or like, I mean, obviously the, the key right now, you're focused on Battlefield Fight League 80 and the task at hand, but you're not, are you signed to an exclusive contract with them or they'll let you fight elsewhere like they have with previous fighters, like Dan went off and fought at Samurai and, and stuff like that? Uh, BFL is always the home, you know, Jay takes care of us, uh, we got, you know, it, the production has gotten better and better, fighting in the city is always great, but uh, I, I do think that there are certain organizations that he'll allow some of us to go fight at, um, but, you know, BFL is home at the end of the day. You said, uh, you know, it, a bit of your time was taken up to help Kyo, because he was on the cusp, he is now in the UFC. Um, so how big of a impact does that have on your game? Like you got a guy who's in the UFC in your gym training with you each and every day. Uh, how much has that pushed you and motivated you that much more? Um, you know, Kyle's been UFC caliber for a while and those of us that know him and me as a training partner, I've definitely known that for a while. Uh, people locally know he's just running, ran through that division. Uh, so it was just a matter of time before he got in and it's more just like the title of, oh, he's a UFC fighter now. Uh, of course, he's getting better and better, and he has access to, you know, the great facilities down there and uh, other training partners. We actually have uh, Carl Williams, who just fought, uh, I believe, last week. He's coming up this week to help Kyle in the final prep for, um, for his fight. So we got some guys from UFC, uh, PFL, one, that are going to be coming down and doing some training, too. So that, that's always great, uh, you know, for the, um, uh, you know, cross-training with uh, other athletes. But, yeah, just being down there for that first fight, um, seeing everything that goes on behind those doors was really uh, motivating and inspiring and it definitely lit a fire uh, and then being down there training with a lot of those guys uh, real eye-opener as far as I, my talent because you know I'm, I'm pretty homegrown at FKP we don't really do much uh, cross training with other gyms besides you know Gibson MMA here and there with some guys at uh, say Lions with Paulie and Amir uh, but other than that, it's it's all under this roof. So to get down there with guys that are active in the UFC, active in um, PFL, you know, Bellator, and do more than just hold my own, it was it was good. It was a really good eye opener. Two things out of that that answer that you gave. Then why is it that you are under just that roof? Then as you, we see locally, a lot of guys uh, train at Pinnacle. They go to Universal and and they cross train all together. What is it about you that, that feels like you need to sort of stay under the Franco's umbrella? Uh, it's not that I need to. It's that I don't need to go anywhere else. You know, I, I got the best person that can teach me wrestling for MMA, grappling for MMA, striking for MMA, MMA in general. Uh, and if there is something that we need to work on, you know, every, there's always space to grow. And we have our, our people, our trusted, uh, you know, extended family, I guess you could say. Because the issue with, um, for me anyways, the issue with everybody training with each other locally is you're going to all fight each other. You know, you've done 100 rounds with so-and-so. Now you got to fight. you got a good read on them. Or, you know, you've done training with this person at this gym. You did an open mat over here. And then now your teammate goes, oh, this is what he likes. Da, 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 da. So there's that. And I just, you know, I have nothing against these guys. Like, I get along with everybody, um, almost everybody, I guess. But... You know, I have no issues with them. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. And I definitely see the plus side. I just never felt I needed it. 
You also said, you know, you spoke about a guy coming up to help Kyo train, uh, come into the gym and help you train as well. Uh, he fought last weekend, I guess you said. But uh, how cool is it for you and Kyo to be going through a fight camp together and not the fact that it's on the BFL card, but he's on the UFC card and you're coming into this one to fight at BFL. Like you guys are going through a full camp together. It hasn't happened in quite some time or if ever. Yeah, it's, it's never happened with us before, so it, it's great. You know, we're both uh, in, in the best shape possible. We're both dialed in mentally. You know, we have that goal at hand, and he's two weeks before me. So, uh, you know, going down there and cornering him uh, along uh, with uh, with Chris and, and Lance, it'll be good. It'll definitely get the juices going, you know, walking down there and eventually, you know, if all goes planned, me making my walk through those doors at uh, the Apex. You know, it, it's it'll be really good. And um, just as far as quality training, it's it's, it's been top notch for this camp. Uh, as we said, you faced Luis Guzman at uh, Battlefield Fight League 79. First round knockout, 31 seconds into the fight. Uh, those 31 seconds, though, were pretty rock'em sock'em. You guys stood there like battle robots or whatever you want to call them, slugged it out. Um, and it was it was all over social media. Like that fight was was bananas was that what you expected in that fight did you expect to go in there and just trade shot for shot with the guy or, or were you looking to to get a little bit more cage time like what was your thoughts going in there and stepping in there after a hiatus like you had uh we don't get paid by the hours so i'm not you know the, the idea of going in there just to get experience in cage time never really crossed my mind i knew one of two things were going to happen one he was going to come in be tentative try to play the striking game on the outside which in that case i would have picked him apart that would have been his uh his worst option or what he did is make it a brawl make it dirty try to get past the reach get inside and make it a fight but the issue with that is he walked right into my clinch and he had no answer for that so there was you know there's nothing he could do if he's on the outside he's in danger if he's on the inside he's in danger and it ended you know accordingly yeah <laughs> 31 seconds accordingly uh he did land some strikes any of those phase you at all because i i know on social media like from what i saw there was one strike before you landed that finishing strike that it looked like your knee buckled am i yeah, reading that or did it not it didn't uh right at the beginning like the first thing he did is loaded up that inside low kick kicked my uh my formerly bad knee and all i could think of was this mother he went after the bad knee and i'm have, having this dialogue and then i'm like wait no my knee's great like is everything okay it, that there's an angle I think Jay shows is from like or whoever was filming at uh, like cage side, and you see my legs kind of wobble, but it was I have no idea what that was. Maybe it was a slip a little bit, but my knee was perfectly fine. None of the shots like he landed a couple of them, but again I'm used to sparring with Kyle who's 270 and he hits like a 270 pound heavyweight. Uh, when he landed a couple of those shots, it was nothing, no white flash, no no damage really or anything. If anything, it just pissed me off that he went after my knee the first thing. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know if anyone else would have noticed the buckle itself. Like, if you're watching it just as you guys punching each other in the face, you don't really see it. But if you're watching, like, the entire body, there is a weird, like, it was like a little, and then you, know. boom, went for the crack. Pissed, Did you have people, it pissed you off? <laughs> Did you have people I, say I, anything or... Yeah, a lot of people were like, oh, he rocked you in the in, in the beginning. And I think even the commentators were saying, like, yeah, he had him hurt. He had him wobbled. And I'm like, oh, damn, it was, it's all the camera angles, man. It was, it was nothing. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> and I know you and uh, Adam Posner, you guys trained together prior to that fight. You guys had a little bet. I am not sure who got it done in that one. I think you might have. But uh, I interviewed him yesterday. And, yeah. you know, he's trained with yourself and he trains with your opponent for this upcoming fight. He said, you know, they can trash talk as much as they want. I'm going to sit back and keep my hands off of this one. Uh, have you trained with him leading up to this fight then? Because he's he's also fighting on this card. Yeah, no, I'm excited for that, for, for his fight. Uh, his opponent is game, and it's going to be a good challenge for him. Uh, I haven't had a chance to really connect with him too much this camp. You know, we were down in down in Vegas, and then things are, haven't just lined up. Um, but I think we'll probably be able to squeeze in maybe one or two two sessions going into this. I, I would love to. He's looking great from what I'm seeing. Uh, dude shredded, and, you know, he's, he's a killer. This is going to be a big challenge for him. I really hope. Um, I just want to see him open up his hands more. 
Like he's a, we all know he's a phenomenal grappler, but he's got good striking too. Like look who his dad is, right? He's got good hands. He's got good striking. I would love for him to just open that up more because the other guy is going to know that he's going to want to wrestle with him. And it's kind of like the Chimaev thing. Like, you know, he's going to shoot. But the thing is, can you stop him? <laughs> yeah, if exactly. Allow, if, if he opens up with his hands a little bit, gives him more, um, you know, depth and a little more dimension to, you know, him getting that sub or whatever he wants to finish. With. That's what I said in the my interview with him yesterday. From a selfish fan's perspective, I'd love to see him strike a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. He's got good hands. Like, I've done a lot of rounds with him. He's got yeah. good hands. Yeah. All right, well, let's move into that fight. Battlefield Fight League 80, a stacked, stacked fight card. You got Christian Tremaine, uh, and there's no no good blood in this one. It seems like all bad blood. I'm not sure whether it's from your perspective or just his, but the, the amount of back and forth uh, from Jay's or the Battlefield Fight League Instagram page is a, a lot of hatred. And is is what he's saying adding fuel to the fire that swept under the rug? Like, did you know that he felt this way about you prior to the fight or prior to this being lined up? Do you know anything about the guy? Like, talk about the bad blood itself. Okay, so how I see things is that he's trying to sell a fight. He's, you know, he wants to be the heel, and that's fine. I get it. I just don't know where the hell this is coming from, man. Like, when they, I have not spoken about him, spoken to him, been in the same room as him prior to um, that face off at Jay's, and that was by coincidence. I was going to do my interview, had a flat tire, ended up getting there later, and it, by the end I finished, he was coming in. That's it. And that's the only time I've ever had been in the same proximity as him. Um, if he had all these things to say about me, I was right there. He should have just said it to me. I went over and said, hey, shook his hand. We did that because uh, Jay is very stressed out about my weight. Uh, so he was like, hey, jump on the scale. Why don't you guys jump on and we'll see what it is, like very lightheartedly. Like, okay, I'm wearing a leather varsity jacket. I'm wearing like three pounds in denim, a belt, a wallet chain, my wallet, my phone, my keys. Everything is full. I ju He's just coming from training, I guess. He was in like shorts and a tank top. He jumps on 195. I jump on 218. And I'm like, okay, well, we're, what, seven weeks out from the fight? You know, it's pretty normal. Um, and then I don't follow the dude on Instagram. I don't follow him. Also, I don't, I never even thought we'd be fighting because to my knowledge, he was like a 45er and then he was a 55er. Like, it never crossed my mind that we'd even be fighting each other. I never, I don't have anybody in my team that's a 45 or 55er. So there's no reason for me to even really look into him. And again, I've never had any interaction with the dude. So he apparently jumped on social media, had a lot of stuff to say. And with that, you know, Battlefield marketing team is smart. They uh, they have loaded questions or they edit things in a certain way. But I honestly didn't even say anything bad. In, in my opinion, I'm, I told the truth on what I thought. And uh, I gave him props. I gave him credit. But uh, he's got a, he's got a hard on for some reason, and uh, he keeps going back and forth and posting things. And I, I think it's kind of comedic because uh, you should be spending that time training. You should be spending that time fighting because at the end of the day, all that chit chat. When we get in there, what do you like? I hope he's training his ass off. I really do because I don't want any excuses at the end. Uh, I just have no idea where it's coming from. <laughs> and if it's all. I, I, Genuine well, noise. I'm going to interview him. So whether you watch that interview or not, I'll find out where it's coming from for myself and my own. Like, I'd like to know. Um, I do know. I've seen him fight. I'm sure you've watched some of his tape. He is a hard-nosed fighter. Uh, he's a guy who, who likes to grind, and I'm sure his, he, he's training well. I'm From my perspective, I know both you guys. I'm fans of both you guys. I'm, I'd say I'm acquaintances or buddies with both you guys. This one, I, this is literally the fight that I'm most excited about on the card, if I'm being honest with you. Whether it lasts 30 seconds like your last fight, or whether it's a gritty, great performance, this fight has fight of the night written all over it, in my opinion. Obviously, I know you're probably hoping otherwise, maybe knockout of the night or something, but I'm saying this one, I'm, I'm taking a step back from the cage, and I'm going to watch it from a fan's perspective, because it has some great, great potential. Leading into that, or going from that, you said you don't know much uh, where it's coming from and whatnot. Obviously, it doesn't add fuel to the fire. You said you're training as you always would. Uh, have you watched tape on him? And do you see, without giving anything away, do you see holes that you're able to exploit in his game? 
Yeah, of course, I've, I've watched uh, as much tape as I can on, on him at this point. Uh, I'm not taking him lightly by any means. Like, just because I'm not bothered by his antics doesn't mean that I, I think I'm going to walk through the guy. Like, he's tough. He's had almost 20 fights pro and amateur. He's fought a lot of dudes. He's never been knocked out. You know, he's only lost by decision. I think he has one TKO loss or, or something like that. But he, he's a tough dude. He's hard to put away. Uh, and he's well-rounded. The same thing I told the guys at BFL, but they didn't clip that one. You know, it was all of the, 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 the borderline trash talking. But I said he's super well-rounded. He's a good striker. He's a good wrestler. He's a good grappler. Uh, and I'm going to be honest, like, he does everything great but nothing exceptional in my eyes. And watching the tape, I see the flaws. I see the holes that I can exploit. Maybe not the next man or, or two guys down the line, whatever. But I see what I can do with my game plan to disrupt his and to walk out that cage with the W. In the videos uh, on social media, he said that he's going to take you down and he's going to force you to wrestle with him and he's going to force you, you know, he's going to ground and pound. Uh, what do you have to say to that? See, I don't know about any of that because he doesn't tag me in it. I don't know who he's talking about. To this well, it was on Battlefield. I believe he said that in a Battlefield uh, post, but I could be wrong. Oh, I don't even know. I got Pro maybe, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know where this, like... Uh... This idea came from that I'm just a striker. Just because I knock people out doesn't mean I'm just a striker. Like, Jeremy, you know I'm, I can grapple. So if he wants to grapple, we can grapple. Like, I'm not this, I'm not like a wonder boy where I'm like, oh, don't take me to the ground. I only can punch and kick. Wherever you want to go, man, this is MMA. Like, you want to clinch, we can clinch. You want to roll, we can grapple. You want to strike, we can stay in the pocket and strike or stay on the outside. I don't care. Like, this is MMA. It's simple. If he wants to turn me into a grappler, I'm, I've been a grappler for 20 years. Let's go. Is, is is him talking like this? Uh, I mean, you you definitely sound like you you want to fight him. Like you know, some sometimes sometimes there's fights where like you you put the opponent out the window and like you're just fighting to fight. This is a guy you want to get your hands on. Yeah, yeah. Why why not? Like, um, he wants to fight me so badly. I will oblige. I don't know why, and I don't know what I've done to piss this dude off. Like, I have genuinely no idea like he's he's based out of revolution right uh he trains all over but yeah revolution based i don't have any issues with dudes at revolution uh i'm i'm cool with the guys at uh matt's gym i guess i don't like i don't have any beef with anybody man i have no problem i'm nice to everybody i don't get it so that's why it's like it doesn't get under my skin because it's so transparent he's like trying to create a story and dude, this is not, this is not theater, you know, like we're here to fight. This is our job. You get a name, you fight. If you want to do all this extra stuff to sell the fight, that's awesome. That's great. But at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we got to fight. So. so despite the trash talk, I mean, you're, you're sounding like a respectful guy following the fight. Is there a handshake? No, <laughs> you know, there's just the, he's, you can talk about me because i'm fighting you but when you start bringing other things in like what is the point like when you start talking about chris franco my coach who's a 51 year old retired mma fighter who is a pioneer in canadian martial arts who is well respected locally and you want to start talking about him like i don't, I don't know my it's just seems off it seems a little too much like he I, you know, you just keep crossed the line. So there's no, we're not going to hug and, and have a beer after this. We're not going to be friends. We're not going to shake hands. Like, we're going to go in there, and I'm going to kick the shit out of him, and that's going to be it. Not much else to say there, then. Uh, <laughs> you said you'd like to fight, you know, get, this fight is in March, uh, or April. May. No? Yeah? April? No, May, 9th. May. May 9th. What, what am I doing here? I already okay. talked to a guy yesterday. I'm like, March? March is done. March is over. April is right now. May. So that's one fight in 2024. No, you've had a fight in February. So two in 2024. You'd like to have four or five. That's ideally. So ideally. That's I think the fight somewhere else. Um, yeah. So that's up to Jay at the end of the day to allow that because I think they only do like four cards a year. So hopefully I can be on all four. Fair enough. Now, if, if you do come out of this one unblemished, you'd like to get in there again, uh, fight elsewhere, potentially. 
what else do you have going on? Because like, obviously we hear the kids in the background. You're not just training yourself. You're training future martial artists. Are there any names in the gym that, that we should keep our eye on? Obviously we have you, we have Kyle in the UFC, Maria who, who fights for battlefield. I don't know if she has a fight coming up at all or anything like that, but who else in the gym should, should people keep an eye on and look out for from Franco's? Uh, you know, right now we got some, some young up and comers, um, you know, just the, the, the local scene has been a little difficult for the people in like their late teens, uh, where they can't fight in BFL, but their tournaments are now unfortunately not really happening. So, uh, we got some, some, some youngsters that are coming up for sure, but Maria, we're looking to get her returned back to uh, competition, whether it's BFL or, uh, maybe even karate combat is something that we're looking to do for her. So it would be, um, you know, it, it, it's exciting. Right now, we got Kyle, we got myself. We're trying to stay as active as possible. Uh, Maria as well. She's training hard. She's getting in, in uh, better shape and hoping to lock her into something soon as well. Final question for you then. You said a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago that, that Jay was worried about your weight. Uh, you obviously, you didn't have trouble with weight in your last fight. So what's the issue right now and why is he worried about this? I've never missed weight once ever let me just leave that there i have never once missed weight at any weight class he is Jaden martin he takes on christian tremaine battlefield fight league 80 may 9th not march not april but may 9th live on ufc fight pass you can check it out there Jaden. if you got anything else to say any sponsors any shout outs the floor is your man um, awesome. Yeah, May 9th, uh, definitely putting on a show, whether it's by uh, stoppage, knockout, submission, you know, I'm looking for that finish. If you haven't seen me fight before, definitely tune in. Uh, check me out on social media as well, Jaden Martin underscore. Uh, Kyle Machado fighting uh, two weeks prior in UFC, so definitely uh, check him out. You know, we're looking for that first W in the UFC. The last one was BS. We know it was a win, but we're not leaving it to the judges this time around. Uh, other than that, guys, you know, thank you for the support. Uh, Jeremy, thanks for having me, man. It's been a while since we chopped it up, so really appreciate it. For sure, man. As I said, taking a back seat on this one, man. I'm standing back as a fan's perspective. I'm excited to see it. Hopefully you have fun on May 9th, man. Definitely.